Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about disorders of the frontal lobes, which again is the part right up here, right behind your forehead. And some argue that this part of the brain is what makes us most human. So we're going to talk about symptoms of frontal lo lobe lesions. And again, lesions are some sort of damage in the brain, whether that's from a brain injury, a stroke, anything along those lines. So motor function is one of the things that is sequenced here in the frontal lobes. Um, so you lose your ability for fine movements, speed, and strength, uh, and you lose the ability to program movement. So essentially you have a hard time doing movements in sequence or coming up with how to do a movement in sequence. Um, and then there's changes in voluntary gaze. Voluntary gaze is when we choose to look at something, right? So I'm choosing to look at different parts of my office right now. That's difficult uh, when you have damage. And each of these slides will highlight which part of the frontal lobe is damaged for that. So the visual search task is one of the ways that we test this. Um, so we say, you know, look at this, you know, red-ish circle in the square and find another one, right? So for just about everybody, it should be pretty obvious that it is right over there on the left <laughs> near the words, right? But with someone with frontal lobe lesions, they would struggle with this task. Uh, there uh, is also reafferents or cholerae discharge, gosh. Uh, so you... Basically, you need internal neural signals to produce both the movements that we're going to do, movements I'm doing right now, and the signal that the movement will occur, right? So, like, my body needs to know I'm going to move. And when you have frontal lobe damage, it disrupts that. Um, and this is why the world doesn't move when you're trying to, like, scan with your eyes, for example. Uh, you can also have speech problems. We've talked about Broca's area already. Um, so you might have impairment in use of verbs and correct grammar. Sometimes this is called a grammatism. Uh, and if you have damage to the supplementary motor cortex, uh, you are mute if it's bilateral damage. There are difficulties with convergent and divergent thinking. Um, so convergent thinking is thinking there's only one answer to a question. Uh, and divergent thinking is the ability to say, there's a lot of different ways we can think about this. Essentially what we're trying to get you to do within a liberal arts education, right? People with frontal lobe lesions struggle with that. It's sort of like everything's like, yes, no, uh, even when things are much more nuanced in real life. There's also a loss of what's called behavioral spontaneity. So they have decreased verbal fluency, so ability to come up with words. Sometimes they lose spontaneous speech so they can respond, but not just start talking on their own. Uh, and then there's decreased design fluency and impaired strategy formation. Uh, so again, difficult to plan and cope with things. And this is again, because your frontal lobe and the prefrontal cortex in particular manage uh, the entire brain. It is the CEO of the brain, which is why the frontal lobe function is often referred to as executive function. Here's an example of word fluency. You give someone a letter and you say, okay, I'll give you 60 seconds, write down or say out loud every word you can think of that starts with that particular letter. Um, so here you see a frontal lobe patient, Mrs. P, uh, and she has a quite short list, and then that's compared to a normal control, who you can see has a much longer list. So they're impaired in their ability to even come up with words. Design fluency is an example here. Um, so you have uh, a normal patient who is able to, a normal subject actually, when you be a patient, who is able to complete this task with no difficulty. Uh, if you have perseveration, what's going to happen is you're going to make the same kind of mark over and over and over and over and over again, and you see this in B. And then in C, we have someone who has lack of spontaneity. Uh, they have difficulty using environmental cues or feedback to regulate or change their behavior. 
Um, this can, as you can imagine, interfere with their social abilities. Um, they also can lose inhibition in responses, and that's where you get that perseveration we just talked about. So the Wisconsin card sorting task uh, is a task that lets you do this, and I think we talked about this during our neuropsych assessment chapter, uh, PowerPoint. But essentially, you can't shift responses. And in the Wisconsin card sort test, the rules constantly change. So something that worked before doesn't. And so uh, most people can adapt and kind of figure it out and problem solve. People with frontal lobe lesions struggle with that. Then the Stroop task we talked about before as well. This is the one where you say the color rather than reading the word. Um, and it's an inhibition, right? Because we're taught to read from such a young age. It's, you have to inhibit your tendency to just read, right? And then actually say the color. And people, again, with frontal lobe lesions have difficulty with inhibition, so would struggle with that. Um, they also take more risks. So there's a task called the Iowa Gambling Task. Uh, and they tend to... Uh, just say, sure, let's do ambiguous things. Um, and controls find that more aversive. And so you can imagine how this would play out in real life if, for example, someone did get into slot machines, poker, something like that. It could lead to some financial difficulties pretty quickly. Um, there's also deficits in self-regulation, partially due to loss of autobiographical memories or autobiographical knowledge. So it's like you're not learning from the past. Um, and loss of associative learning. So you can't select from competing responses, uh, and again, can't learn from your past experiences. Um, again, self-regulation is a big thing here. They have trouble regulating their behavior in unstructured situations, so they can't inhibit behaviors that normally are just not acceptable, uh, unless someone's explicitly telling them not to do it. Um, and again, this loss of autobiographic knowledge seems like such a small thing, but it's not because we do learn from the past and everything we are builds on what we know about ourselves. So that makes it difficult to put ongoing life events in context, at least to difficulty in regulating behavior flexibility. Uh, there's also associated learning deficits uh, where you might not uh, learn to associate a hand posture with a color, um, and it can be on either hemisphere. Uh, temporal memory is also something that's related here. Um, so recency memory, uh, test memory for the order in which things have occurred. Um, so you kind of give someone a story or a series of pictures and then you ask them to sort of reconstruct that in the right order. And here's where frontal lobe patients struggle. And again, you can think about this with that executive functioning ability or lack thereof in these patients. The biggest example here is Phineas Gage. You have uh, some great videos about him on your modules, so I won't go too, too much into him, but basically very famous psychological case. Um, he was a world worker uh, working on using a tamping iron to pat down something for an explosive because they were clearing things for the railway to go by. Um, got distracted, didn't pay attention hit the wrong thing, a spark went off, it set off the explosives, and the rod went up and through his head. Um, that's one of the things I like about the video is they explain that. A lot of people, I think, think he just walked around the rest of his life with this big thing in his head. No, it went directly up and through. Um, and his personality changed, and he had uh, several issues, started swearing, things like that. Uh, so, like, the common narrative in psychology has been he essentially could never function again. There's some recent evidence that that's not the case, that he actually worked as like a carriage driver, things along those lines. Um, he did for a while uh, serve as a sideshow at a circus. People would like pay their five cents to go in and see this guy and he would carry around the pod with him, which is heartbreaking, right, in some ways. So uh, just to show how much he is a famous figure here, um, I have a whole series of magnets of famous psychologists, and one of the only non-psychologists I have is Phineas Gage. He has a magnet with his rod, so he is a very well-known case uh, in psychology. Uh, in terms of social behavior, so what Gage struggled with, 
Uh, so we see changes in personality. Sometimes this is called pseudo depression. Um, they have apathy, indifference, no initiative. So not have that get up and go do things. They also have reduced sexual interest and sometimes little or no verbal output. There's also pseudo psychopathy. Psychopathy is uh, the word to describe uh, psychopaths or sociopaths, which are diagnostically the same thing uh, in the DSM, they're both referred to as antisocial personality disorder. Um, and we see this in lesions of the front lobe, immature behavior, lack of tact and restraint, promiscuous sexual behavior, so sort of the opposite. Uh, and coarse language, lack of social graces, increased motor activity. So this coarse language, lack of social graces, does sound like what happened to Gage. Um, you can also get more dramatic personality changes. Uh, if inhibitions are reduced uh, and it, it can introduce abnormal sexual behavior, uh, it can lead to deficits in identifying facial expressions as well. And um, you can also just have lack of desire, uh, but can still actually engage in sexual activity. There's also some evidence that they have spatial deficits. Uh, because of how the brain connects to other parts of the brain, in particular how the frontal lobe here connects to the parietal cortex. Um, so it can impair your memory for sh location of events. It can uh, interfere with your ability to navigate space using visual motor guidance. Uh, so definitely difficult. Um, so we've gone over a lot of these assessments already. But I just wanted to point out that we have a lot of different ways to test these things, which is great. Uh, and essentially, if you have frontal lobe damage, you're going to have some deficits on at least one of these usually. And so some of the things we've just talked about, like the Wisconsin card sort, the Stroop word fluency, design fluency. For motor, there are things like finger tapping. Um, there's something called the groove pegboard where you can make people put in pegs certain angles to see their motor ability, uh, things like basic language comprehension we can test, um, and the Tower of London. There are psychological or psychiatric disorders that affect the frontal lobe. So uh, schizophrenia is one of the main ones. Um, and so if you're not familiar with schizophrenia, it is essentially usually marked by delusions, hallucinations, seeing things that aren't there, believing things that aren't true. Uh, so they do poorly on frontal lobe tasks in general. So it seems like there is some frontal lobe issue here. Parkinson's, which again we've already discussed, uh, seems to be linked to the loss of dopamine cells in the substantia nigra. That indirectly project to the prefrontal cortex, so they tend to be impaired on that Wisconsin card sort. And then we've talked about Korsakoff's as well, um, so alcohol-induced damage, and they also perform poorly on that Wisconsin card sort. One interesting thing about Korsakoff's is, if you remember, it's caused by over-alcohol use, um, and drug and alcohol addiction are actually linked to frontal lobe issues in and of themselves. So impulsive, compulsive behaviors or perseveration, some of the things we've already talked about, some of the things that might link to the gambling issues, for example. Um, and addictive drugs can actually change the structure of your neurons. Uh, so that is something that is problematic and explains why people with these issues struggle for so long. All right, hopefully that helps illuminate some of the major topics here and enjoy doing the rest of the module.